Buenos días y gracias a todos. Eh, hay, eh, lamentablemente no puedo hablar en, en español, eh, así que yo voy a eh, hacer la presentación en inglés. Um, so thank you very much, and sorry for disturbing a little bit the planning. I was not able to, to make this talk the first day, uh, so I will try anyhow to make the link with uh, uh, my following uh, presenters. So uh, I'm, I'm Dominique Richard, and I'm the manager of the European Topic Center on Biological Diversity, which is in fact um, a satellite of the European Environment Agency, which is based in Copenhagen. But my center is based in the Museum of Natural History in Paris, so therefore, uh, and our center is dealing particularly with the topic of biodiversity. So the, the role of the European Environment Agency um, is a role of providing information on the environment uh, in support to decision making at European level. Um, so it's, uh, the role is very much about providing facts and figures, uh, providing statistics, providing some elements on the sta state and trends of the environment uh, uh, in support to the decision making. And this concerns, of course, a variety of fields, uh, water, quality, transport, climate change, climate adaptation, circular economy, um, biodiversity. One of the mandate of the agency is to publish every five years the State of the Environment Report. And currently, uh, we are all preparing for this big report 2020. When I say big, it doesn't mean it will be a big paper report, but let's say a big compilation of information coming from 39 countries in Europe. So that means the 28 member of the European Union, plus a number of countries um, which are part of the um, area of the scope of the agencies, such as Norway, Switzerland, Turkey, uh, Iceland, but also the West Balkan countries. So in fact, uh, just to position the uh, EA as compared to other institutions like the European Commission. So the EA is not a regulator, so we are not working at all on the legislation itself, on making uh, policy, uh, not policy maker. We are not either a research body and we are not funding neither research nor funding implementation of action. It's rather gathering the information on environment coming from different countries uh, with the aim to make it comparable at European scale so that the laws that, that will be uh, implemented at European level have a solid background that can have, let's say, a comparable uh, more or less um, baseline, baseline uh, across all the countries. And what is very important, it is in fact a network of organization. So in each country which are participating in the European Environment Agency, there are national focal points which organize the flow of information from the national level to the European level on the different topics that are at stakes. So, uh, in terms of biodiversity, let's see what are the really the, ba the big uh, uh, element at stake and wh why should we uh, worry and act about it. So, we tr probably tend to forget that we are in a dec decade for biodiversity, which started in 2010, where there were commitments done uh, by policymakers uh, in Nagoya in 2010 uh, to really there was a consciousness that there was something urgent to be done about uh, biodiversity loss and a series of 
strategies have been implemented both at global level as part of the Convention on Biological Diversity, but also at different uh, in the different contracting parties to the national to the Biodiversity Convention. And at the European Union level also, there is this strategy to try uh, within a decade to make huge progress uh, to try to at least uh, halt biodiversity loss because it was, of course, impossible to halt uh, biodiversity loss. So the, this decade is ending soon and uh, countries are all in an active um, a phase of making statement, try to see where they are, what is the, the, the situation. Um, so just very rapidly uh, to remember this Article 2 of the Convention on Biological Diversity, which was um, really br bringing the foundation of a definition of biodiversity, looking at the three level, genetic diversity, species diversity, and ecological diversity, so the interaction between species and within species. But probably in, in Europe there is a dimension that is uh, very specific uh, given the long-term interaction between man, well, human influence and the ecosystem is the landscape uh, aspect. And when coming around uh, also uh, here uh, in this area of the Basque countries and in the Mediterranean in particular, probably landscape have a huge role to play in Europe in terms of the, the preservation of, of biodiversity. So um, as part of our work in the Topic Center, uh, we are providing support to the European Commission to gather some information which is now to be reported by all the countries of the European Union. Every six years, they have to provide a state of uh, the conservation status of all the species and all the habitats which are listed in two um, directives, the uh, directive, the birds directive and the habitats directive, which are the two main bodies, legislative bodies in the European Union for protection of biodiversity. So the first report was published in 2015 and uh, this provided an assessment of the status of 447 wild bird species. So these are all the bird species that regularly occur in the European Union, 230 habitat types, and 1,200 other species, uh, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, a few uh, insects, uh, plants, of course. Uh, so it's a very important um, a program because the countries, this is a commitment that they have that every six years they have to report. So that means that behind there needs to be some monitoring systems in place to be able to really uh, make the statement and to this is the only way to see whether there is progress or not. So the assessment that was published in 2015 was uh, expectedly a bit worrying. Uh, here is the si situation for birds. So from all uh, the 447 bird species, um, while there are almost 52% per uh, of the population of these bird species which are secure, so this is the dark green, uh, that means that all the, the other part except the light green, they are in a rather insecure uh, situation. And among them, there are 20%, the red one, uh, that is continuing to decline. While there is only about among the non-secure, only 4% that are increasing. And what is worrying is that, uh, and this is um, something that can be seen, is that many uh, um, common species, what used to be common species, are in fact very quickly declining in terms of their population. And this is true for the skylark in the rural areas, but it's also true for uh, <coughs> sorry, the house sparrow 
And there was, uh, in fact, uh, this publication, a Spanish publication, How Sparrow Decline, a link to air pollution and poor diet. So uh, this is something that is now really striking us. It's happening very in, in our neighborhood, in our cities as well. Among the other species, so the non-bird species, here you can see that uh, in green, only 23% of the assessment for all the other species are, is uh, favorable, while what is red and pink, this is an unfavorable situation, and 22% <coughs> are continuing to deteriorate as well. So, of course, as opposed to the bird species, these species that are here assessed are species that were already listed in the Habitats Directive because they are in a rather critical situation. But still, uh, it's worrying to see that they are continuing to um, decrease in terms of their population. For the habitats, uh, the situation is even probably more critical. Out of the 230 habitats of European importance, you can see that only 60% are in a favorable conservation status, and 30% uh, are unfavorable and are continuing to deteriorate. So this is what has been, uh, this was reported from this EU reporting, but you're probably aware also of this research, the founding of this research in Germany, uh, that was a big shock. Uh, about uh, monitoring over, I think, more than 20 years in protected area in Germany, where it was discovered that almost 80% uh, of the population of the insects had been declining. And there was here also in El Pais uh, this um, uh, article, Adios a los insectos de tu infancia. So again, there is the biodiversity with, let's say, the visible mammals, the, the otter, the charismatic, the emblematic species, but what happens is that it's the whole matrix of life with these insects that you don't see, which are really declining uh, and uh, possibly the, the species itself are disappearing. Uh, the same uh, at, your, at a global scale uh, as part of the International Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, which is now the equivalent of the International Panel for Climate Change that has been set up for biodiversity. One of the first outcome of this uh, IPBES was uh, the publication of a series of report, uh, one of them on um, the, the pollinators, and stating that more than 40% 40, 40 of invertebrate pollinators uh, and 16.5% six, of vertebrate pollinators are at risk at going, of, at going extinct. So the, 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 we can see that not only at, global, at national level, European level, but global level. So um, now you're probably all familiar uh, with this, the link between the biodiversity, the, the ecosystem services, that we recognize that biodiversity is providing a lot of goods for our well-being, provisioning service, supporting services, cultural services, regulating services. But what I found interesting is now at European level, uh, there is a whole program also to engage the countries to try to see how to implement in practice this concept. And Spain has been a very uh, pioneer uh, in that sense uh, with the implementation of the um, um, kind of eco Millennium Ecosystem Assessment for Spain, where uh, they insist very much in the dimension, the link to the people, and um, so not to the economic, only the economic dimension of the benefits that we get from biodiversity, but all the social aspects, uh, uh, the, the, the importance for people uh, as well. 
And uh, I was uh, happily surprised to see that also in the Basque country, uh, so there are now this uh, methodological guide to map the uh, ecological services um, for, from uh, ecosystems. So uh, in the European Environment Agency, as part of this State of the Environment Report 2015, we have tried to map the different drivers uh, which impact uh, the European ecosystems. So as recognized, generally it is recognized that there are five main drivers of uh, biodiversity uh, loss. It's habitat change, climate change, over exploitation, invasive alien species, pollution, and nutrient enrichment. And if uh, across uh, the different ecosystems, so urban, cropland, grassland, woodlands, etc., you can see that one of the main driver of changes currently is habitat change, uh, with these very dark uh, uh, colors, and uh, not only happening currently, but continuing to increase in many cases, or at least not decreasing. Another one uh, which is important is pollution and nutrient enrichment. But interesting to see that, for instance, climate change, that for the timing is in yellow, um, yellow orange, now every, all the arrows are in the sense of increasing. So uh, the current cha challenges is, of course, a lot on habitat change. Uh, but climate change is an obvious, very important driver to uh, uh, face. Uh, but also invasive alien species will probably um, increase in the future. So in terms of uh, changes uh, in the territory, uh, there is this powerful tool database, which is Korean Land Cover, uh, which is a database which is harmonized across uh, the different countries in Europe and which is regularly updated. Uh, we are currently uh, waiting for the result for 2018. <clears throat> and here you see the changes over the period 2006, 2012. And in red, uh, so on the left part, is the absolute value in terms of changes in land cover with, of course, a huge increase in artificial area in red, which is done at the expenses uh, mainly of arable land in yellow and permanent crops, but also of semi-natural vegetation uh, in green. And you can see the, the, the percentage on, on the right side. So uh, within the six years period, 2.5% uh, increase in uh, artificial uh, area. Uh, and here, uh, this is the, the annual land take by several types of human activities. So the, the in, in green is the land take by housing, uh, while industrial and commercial suits uh, in, in black. And in yellow, in the orange, the, the lower part, is land uptake by construction. So in fact, it's all the land which is in expectation to be constructed. So in fact, um, while there are a lot which is already constructed, it's continuing and, and there is still a lot that um, is, is being done uh, under construction. Interesting to see uh, the share of land take over this period by the different countries in Europe. And in fact, Spain is the highest contributor of land take in Europe with 17.2% um, of total land take. Uh, and in Malta, it's 0.00%. .00 0.3, but having been in Malta, I can say that there's not much to be urbanized more, so uh, of course. <laughs> uh, a recent uh, production from the EA, so the, the image is not very good because this is a capture of a screen, because in fact this is an interactive tool, uh, it's an indicator of fragmentation 
of landscape. So when you go to the website, you can uh, click on the area which you're, you're interested in and you can see uh, different elements of this indicator. Uh, so I, I invite you to, uh, to visit it. So you can see that currently Spain doesn't appear as a very fragmented uh, country as compared to France, for instance, or, or uh, Netherlands, or uh, even the, the um, UK. Uh, but if we see the, the picture before, uh, with the land take that is so important, well, there might be also some changes for the future. So landscape fragmentation, of course, it's not, it's um, uh, here you have the, 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 the situation of animals that cannot uh, cross road uh, anymore. Uh, and um, so the, the, the disruption of population uh, with the problem of not being able to um, reproduce uh, um, um, across different metapopulation. But a uh, probably um, quite invisible aspect is the so-called homogenization process. So uh, on the top you can see in a mosaic of landscape a very diversified uh, fauna community which interact in different relations of predator-prey and with a simplification of a landscape, you have a corresponding simplification of the fauna community, but of, of course the flora as well, to the point that at the end, you come to landscape which are very simplified, and you have also some species communities which are very simplified, where only, let's say, the more opportunistic species remain, and you have all the special, more specialized species that have declined or uh, gone out from this environment uh, because it is no longer suit suitable for them. And this talks about uh, losing some resilience of uh, these ecosystems. So some of the responses to this rather uh, sad picture. Um, what is EU doing? A main tool, of course, uh, a main policy instrument are the two directives, the Birds Directive and the Habitats Directive uh, in the European Union, uh, which include in particular the implementation of the Natura to Southern Network. Five minutes, okay, yes. More than 27,000 uh, sites, 18% of the territory now, uh, and uh, land territory and 6% of the marine territory. And it is the largest coordinated network of protected area in the world. Uh, beyond this uh, legal instrument, uh, the uh, European Union has been implemented, implementing its biodiversity strategy to 2020, and there are six targets. So the first target is to implement the legislation, so the Habitats Directive, Bird Directive. The second target relates to uh, restoring the ecosystem and implementing green infrastructure. The third, the third one relates to how to have a better agriculture, more sustainable, uh, and forestry. The fourth one is about fishery, more sustainable fishery. The fifth one, the uh, uh, combating inv invasive alien species. And the sixth one is more what to do to help at the global level uh, biodiversity loss. So this green infrastructure, uh, there is a specific strategy implemented in 2013. Uh, and the idea is to promote the deployment of green infrastructure in the European Union, in urban and rural areas. So this is, uh, let's say, uh, recognized uh, by the Parliament uh, and the European Commission. There are here, uh, the European Environment Agency has published a report which tries to uh, identify are the different elements of what we call green infrastructure, building upon different case studies uh, found across uh, Europe. 
in the on the research part um, the, um, the commission is promoting uh, also all this research on nature-based solution uh, knowing that this is the term which is used from the biodiversity community but from the climate side for instance in the climate uh, adaptation strategy of the european union they talk about ecosystem-based uh, adaptation and from the water um, part, they talk about uh, water, water uh, based retention, or let's say it's the same kind of concept which are show, seen from different policy perspectives, but which all recognize that nature and ecosystem have a role to play in trying to mitigate flood pre prevention, uh, climate. Um, uh, mitigation, uh, adaptation, etc. There is a portal uh, which is uh, uh, supported by uh, the research uh, funding, which is OPLA, and which offers, which present a number of case studies on this nature-based solution. Uh, the EU has also launched an urban agenda uh, in 2016, uh, which promotes a partnership approach uh, between EU organization, national government, local authorities, etc., and to try to ensure better implementation of existing uh, regulation, but also to see how to better fund the different initiatives uh, in urban environment and build up an urban policy knowledge. Uh, and here, a number of uh, publications from the European Environment Agency in the agency agenda, urban is quite recent, let's say the last five, four years, in fact. Uh, so urban sprawl in Europe, landscapes in transition, green infrastructure and flood management, exploring nature-based solution, uh, etc. And just to say there is also a portal, the Biodiversity Information System for Europe, buys. So this is a portal where you can find some information on policy implementation on biodiversity. But uh, you can see that there, there is a, a, a section on countries. And under this section countries, there is a specific topic uh, link, um, uh, representing implementation of green infrastructure in different countries. And in fact, Vitoria Castes appears for the section on Spain on the BIS portal of uh, uh, the biodiversity portal of the European Environment Agency. So this is all what I wanted to share with you. Thank you very much.